Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David. Hallelujah. You know, as I look at everyone here, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining. If God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like, how your ten years, some of you are escaping some things forever. Satan notwithstanding. Look, it pays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success. That lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm. There are those who are called the elites in this earth realm. Those who know. There are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite. Hallelujah. And tonight I trust that the word of God will provoke you. Make sure you write. Please, if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor. And he told John, he said, write, although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science. Bigger than philosophy. Bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a, not a mystery, but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the Spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. In chemistry, there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions. Once they happen, they have happened. This is what is happening to your life. There is an irreversible spiritual reaction. Hallelujah. You will become something. And then when you become it, those who are running Helter Skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the queue. Bishop talked of a 75-year-old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you. So you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, Oh God, you jump this, 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 go back. Many people will go back. The Bible says, it's the thief that follows through the window. Is that in your Bible? Hustling can help you jump through the window. Is that true? But life will bring you back, I tell you. May it not happen when you have children. Because they will go back too with you. 
And as you are moving, they will be saying, Daddy, why? Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again. He said, in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was cast. May you be the light when darkness comes upon men. And that light will make kings to come to your rising. Gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising. Like Shiva, they will come with their goods. To reward your sacrifices of today. And Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea. And come to test him. The entire kings of the earth came together. Solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom. I pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? It's important that we understand the biblical concept of success. I want to define success by God's standards. Because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers. And many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success. But we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things. Say after me, I received this dimension of wisdom. Say one more time, I received this dimension of wisdom. Grant us this wisdom, O God. Grant us this wisdom. I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success in the kingdom. Number one, it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to His nature and principles. The first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car, not a house, not jeep. Wrong parameters. In Jeremiah 9.23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. Hallelujah. He said, but let him that glory and glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God, to the degree to which you know God, and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles, you are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children, in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character, the formation of Christ. So that you become a visible manifestation of just like Jesus. The Bible says, In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, He was the physical expression of whatever you think God is. Hallelujah. Number two, it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life. It's not enough to know God. 
It means to experience. Look at me. The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation of the sons of God. There are many people who can explain success. But there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life. The world is not waiting for explanations. They are waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. So success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God. In how many areas? Success is not just about money and finance. No. Your health. Your family. Your relationships. It means to experience the blessing of God. Everybody say the blessing of God. In your career, in ministry, in whatever area of your life. That your life will be an example. A portrait. There are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things. The biblical portrait of a blessed man is Abraham. The biblical portrait of wisdom is Solomon. The biblical portrait of the prophetic is Elijah. The biblical portrait of the law is Moses. Hallelujah. The biblical portrait of love is John. The biblical portrait of faith is Peter. And so on and so forth. May you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Kingdom definition of success. We are talking about wisdom. So I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight. Number three. It means to accomplish your life goals and your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat, in other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of Him that has sent me. He said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before I formed you, I knew you, I called you, I ordained you to be a prophet. It means to accomplish your goals in life. To do and finish your God-given assignment. One more, number four. It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success, according to the kingdom definition, means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says He gives rain both to the godly and ungodly. When your life becomes a reference point, both to believers and unbelievers, you are successful. He said, let your light so shine before men, not Christians, before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Bible says we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, that we may do that which we have been ordained for. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Write this word down, exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of God. Exploits. It means unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment. Unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment. Hallelujah. Exploits. 
Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is a general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. This is the general definition of wisdom. Wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. When knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately, we call that wisdom. Are you there? Accurate application of knowledge. But you see, the wisdom I'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition. It's a higher realm, Mark 6. Mark 6. Let's examine this kind, this type and this dimension. Mark 6. Say after me, I received this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? Astonished. Saying, from where had this man these things? He said, and what wisdom is this? Which is given unto him. And through that wisdom, what happens? He said that even such mighty works. I'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits. Beyond the realm of this earth. This is not the kind of wisdom you find around. The Bible says Jesus walked in that level of wisdom. And when he began to talk, they asked him, they said, from where, where is this man coming from? And what wisdom is this? Everybody say, what wisdom is this? So let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about. This wisdom is the supernatural ability. The supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions. The supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions. This is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We we'll read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says... Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. 
But if ye have bitter envies and strife in your heart, that means there are some wis- levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says, This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom. Human wisdom. What we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily. Earthly wisdom. Sophia. Hallelujah. Number three. Sensual wisdom. This is the wisdom that you get through study. Scientific wisdom. Philosophical wisdom. Wisdom that comes through studies. Hallelujah. That's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment. And then the fourth kind of wisdom. The Bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom. This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt. A type of Babylon. It was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used. And they accomplished supernatural, extraordinary things. But hear what the Bible says. Verse 17. This is the wisdom we are considering tonight. He said, but the wisdom that is from above. Come on now. Where is it from? It's not from the earth realm. I will show you that you cannot find it. It does not have a physical location in the earth realm. It's first pure. Peaceable. Gentle. And easy to be entreated. Full of mercy. And good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy. This is the wisdom we are talking about. This dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm. Wisdom from above. Above and beyond anything that you know. Everybody say, I receive that wisdom. Hallelujah. There is this dimension of wisdom. And there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today. Solomon in scripture. The Bible says that Solomon had an interaction with God and he was given this wisdom. And the reign of Israel during the dispensation of Solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like. There was no war. Hallelujah. Solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of Israel. No war during his time. There was peace and tranquility by this wisdom. And tonight I pray that we will find it. We will find it. So that you and some of your family members will rest forever. I pray for you that you will find it. There are some things that when you find, they become life. They exempt you forever. Hallelujah. Job 28. How do we access this wisdom? 
this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around. This wisdom that defies scientific wisdom. Wisdom that is bigger than studies. Wisdom that is bigger than age. Age does not give this kind of wisdom. This is the wisdom that when they gathered around with Job, many people were speaking out of different wisdom. Earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom. And Elihu said, uh uh. He said, I was young and you people were old. So I thought to keep quiet. He said, I thought that experience should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. Any kind of man. Hallelujah. Solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of Israel. Twelve years of age. But he became a king with this mighty wisdom. And he ruled for 40 years. Twelve years. How old are you? Those who celebrated their birthdays, how old are you? But a 12 year old boy, confused and perplexed. You see why he asked God for wisdom? What will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask? Wife? Husband? He said, Oh Lord, I'm but a small boy. And God said, Don't worry. There is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you, you will produce exploits for 40 years. Hallelujah. Job 28. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. It's a long reading. Let me read. This is Job. The Bible calls Job the richest, blessed, blessed man in the East. He was a great man. When the elders saw him, they stood up. The young men saw him and they bowed their face. They could not look at him. What dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success? Read with me, 28. Surely, there is a vein for silver. That means, where silver is mine has been found by men. Is that true? And a place for gold where they refine it. Iron is taken out of the earth. And bronze is smelted out of stone. He set it an end to darkness and started out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadows of death. Listen. Verse 6. He said the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. He's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted, but he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bringeth forth it to life. Verse 12, are you there? Here's the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. 
Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they built across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. That's in. He said, man knoweth not his price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are, this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people. Because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said even the sea, those who have worked in abundance. Who claim they have found the wisdom. All of the people that Forbes magazine is listing. The Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource. They finished eating animals. They ate plants and grasses. It was remaining only human beings. And mother said, let's start eating our children. Where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people? There will be a replay of that. Yeah. The Bible says it in Malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven. And all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed. Let me tell you the truth. If you do not access this wisdom, whatever else you have are just shadows. Are you getting blessed tonight? The Bible says, 15, it cannot be gotten for gold. That means you don't buy this wisdom with money. If you could buy it with money, the wicked wealthy men including the Illuminati, they will buy everything and be the custodians of it. But the Bible says this one, even gold, cannot buy it. You can't buy it. It's not the personal possession of any man. It cannot be weighed for silver. It is not valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx and the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearl. Or the price of wisdom is above rubies. It says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with your gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is this wisdom? That everything that men value today cannot buy it. This is what Solomon saw. And when he got it, every other thing that could not buy it followed him. Come on now. I give you a master key. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Listen to the word of God when he speaks. Because they are life to those who find them. Many people will not listen. This is the problem, pastor. It's not just the sharers. There are some of you looking at me and you are saying, is this thing really important? It will be important when all else fail in your life. My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually Forever, there are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion US dollars in debt. Increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day. How many generations will pay it? They are the ones we call the wise. 
They are the ones who are trying to follow. The Bible says they can't buy this wisdom. Are you hearing me? With all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of government, they've not been able to stop war. But a 12-year-old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation. Where is this wisdom? My God, I pray that somebody will get this wisdom. Solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust. Silver like the dust. If you find silver outside, you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it. First thing. But the time came, people saw it and they just left it. My God, I received that dimension of wisdom. I receive it. Let's finish up. Seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Abaddon, the place of the dead, and death say, We have heard its fame with our ears. God understandeth his way. This is the secret. He said, With all this confusion that men are having, God is saying, I know where it is. I know where it is because I kept it. And I know the place of it. Where is this wisdom? How can you access this wisdom? With this wisdom, Daniel entered a strange land. And he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings. The same result. The same result. Through the dispensation of three different kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This dimension of wisdom, we are talking about accessing this wisdom now. This dimension of wisdom only comes from God. The first thing I want you to know about this wisdom in, an, in accessing it is that it is given. Everybody say it is given. God gives men. You don't study it. You don't look for it. It's a waste of time. God gives men. Hallelujah. When you meet his conditions, he will give it to you. God gives men. Ready? Let me write the conditions for you. The conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom. Number one, you must have a passionate love for God and his agenda. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him, not them that speak in tongues. Not them that attend koinonia. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. What God has in store. For who? Them that love him. We are going to examine Solomon's life very quickly before we pray. Because he's the biblical portrait. Let me teach you something. Every time you are searching out for something in life, stop confusing yourself. Go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for. The Bible says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bare thee. He said, I called him alone and I blessed him. That means, as far as God is concerned, when you are talking about blessings and prosperity, Abraham is God's portrait of a blessed man. Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu. Not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father. And to Sarah that bear thee. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel. Different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. I 
Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you. Your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service. There are many people who serve God but they do not love God. They don't have that passionate love. They are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment. You are in a family where everybody is a Christian. So you have to go to church. You have to come for koinonia. He said, and Solomon did what? Love the Lord. That means every other thing that he did was because of that love. A man can serve God because of wife. I hope you know that. A man can serve God because of husband. A man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment. And you just find the nearest church and say, Ah, let me find refuge in this place. And rest before I find out what is going on. People can serve God for various reasons. For car, for house, for prosperity, for job. He said, but Solomon loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. When you give God your heart, not your hands, not your tears, when you give God your heart, I'm giving you a big secret. Many Nigerians do not love God. Many pastors do not love God. They love ministry. They love suits. They want ministry advancement, but they do not love the Lord. Many leaders in this country do not love the Lord. Many young people Hustlers who keep hustling forever. They don't love the Lord. Many fathers, many mothers do not love the Lord. And we wonder why His blessings and His wisdom is far from us. Some of you here looking at me don't love the Lord. You love the house of God. You love the people of God. You love Christian music. But you don't love the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. Can that be your testimony? That will say, ah, and Eben loved the Lord. And Paul Maman loved the Lord. Some of you, as you say, and you love the Lord, your spirit will tell you no way. You say, and you are now willing to love the Lord. Not that you love the Lord. I keep emphasizing this passion for God. Because if you are not rooted in love, success will make you run away from God. Are you hearing me? Success will make you do what? Let me tell you. If you enter real success, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are levels. The, the problem is, Many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful, it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first condition. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. You want to access this wisdom? You must have what? A sincere desire to be a blessing. Same First Kings 3, from verse 8 and 9. God gave Solomon an open check. He said, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? Look up. If Solomon was a Nigerian, and God says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? His first question would be, is he only me? 
Will there be any other person with it? Say no, only you. Say, ha. God, you better carry paper and viral. Let me empty my own life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two. All the people that have called me a failure, prove a point to them. Is that not true? Number three. Make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them. Let me tell you, hear me. If that is your desire, I assure you, it is not God's wisdom you will ever get in life. You can get any other thing, but you can't get God's wisdom that way. The Bible says, Indeed, Genesis 12 verse 2, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. There are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by working for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people. Many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love. They are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry. I told God, if you never bless me in this life, if I never become successful in this life, I may do many things, but not loving you is not one of them. He has my heart. Believe me. I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I will never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I heard Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry. Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, Anything you pray, anything you ask me, I will give you. I mean, Jesus appears to you. The first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand. And mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything. Till five minutes to one, you will sit down and say, Lord, I'm still thinking. Okay, I remember. Do this for me, for me, for me. I trust God that in the years to come, in Koinonia, our testimony will not just be God gave me tea, God gave me bread, God gave me a handkerchief, but that God used me to do this for somebody else. It is at that point we will clap. Right now we are clapping for God change me and we thank you for it. God did this. A millionaire is not one who has one million. A millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million. Oh God, I want this. I want fame. I want power. Give me this church. Oh God, I'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold. I want to wear the one that I'm buying. I'm, oh God, change my story. And God is saying for you, or for me, or for my kingdom. And God said, well, this, when we get to that bridge, have you had people say that? That when we get there, we'll cross it. You better, God can see your heart. Everybody say, I love the Lord. And I desire to be a blessing. See, can I tell you, if you are looking for success for yourself, you don't need much effort. You know, you know that? How many clothes can you wear? How many books can you write? But when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are, you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God. My ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I, I trust God for the oil of your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you 
touch me. There will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say you, for because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why, sir. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our house. Change our story, oh God. Say, amen. God said, no way. You are the one shouting amen there. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can He have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God and you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them and don't announce it. Build it, put everything and come and tell them this was why God blessed them. You say, if I do this to you, here's the condition. It must be on newspaper. It must be on CNN. All of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and I will give you the key in front of everybody. That way, they will now know that I'm serving the Lord. Doesn't work that way. How many of you are ready to be blessed? How many of you know that if, if you are successful today, you will give scholarships, you will build orphanages, you will build churches? Let me tell you the truth. Many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the 10,000 you have. Even your tithe, you have not been faithful. You just saw 1,000. Hey! 1,000. You can buy palm oil, you can buy salt. Maggi one tier. Gary, if he's the half one, said it will hurt. Number three. So number one, a passion for God and His agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you. As you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's that their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. The way, the way Tokumbo is going now, Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they taught us in Nigeria. Pass off. <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima. Say Fatima. Me. I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not set to be a blessing, I am telling you. I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving. Any day I talk about the law of giving, don't be confused. Let me tell you straight to the point what I'm talking about. The law of giving is number one, your tithe. Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. 
even if you give one billion for any project, if your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God to collect money from you. Because if that is it, you, you will never be successful. This is not about money. It's about maintaining an open heavens. The Bible says, Bring ye all your tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young. And he said, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, how much? It's just 5,000. Even God understands. Oh, my father gave his tithe for me. All these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life. Say, I receive grace to tithe. Be consistent. I have envelopes. Envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in. I've told you, this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound, one whatever it is, the tithe is taken first. When we started the school of ministry, the same thing. The tithe, as I speak to you right now, the tithe for the collection of this night is already set. There were many trees in the Garden of Eden. But God kept the tithe and told man, don't touch it. Every time you take what God did not give you, he will return back or something. He will collect from something that he had given you. Say amen. Every time, some of you, you take the tithe, what happens? He will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, you, you in your mind, you even have it in a pen. Your tithe for March and now that you plan to give God. But you have not yet given. You say, God, you look at the heart. Number two, your kingdom investments. I'm talking of your offerings. I'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of God. If you have a business tight, you have a church tight, you have anything tight, tight, and you and open heavens. So your kingdom investments and then giving to God's servants, prophet offerings, and giving to the needy. These are the things that constitute the law of giving. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 4, it says Solomon offered a thousand, everyone say one thousand bond offerings. Say one thousand. Look up. We are not up to one thousand in this place. Do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field, and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging Animals. 800, 801, 802, 870, 900, 950, 991 to 1,000. And then they caught all of them. You just see blood spilling around. What waste. What waste. And God saw a man doing this. While Solomon got to the 900 one, he said, Lord, steal for you. He got to 991. He said, Lord, for you. And he killed the 1,000. And God said, no way. 
God himself had to come down and say, Solomon, you have touched me. You have touched me. In, what do you want? Come on now. There are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of God. Hallelujah. In my little life, I've had the opportunity to do some dangerous giddings. I've told you, God does not love a cheerful giver alone. God also loves a crying giver. There is he that weepeth and bearing precious seeds. There is he that weepeth. There are some givings that you don't just give laughing. You will give and cry. You will give and call yourself a fool after the service. How be it? Your faithfulness will endure. Finally, under accessing this wisdom, ask of the Lord. First Kings 3 verse 9. Solomon asks of the Lord. Solomon asks of the Lord for an understanding heart. James 1 verse 5. The Bible says, Does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask of the Lord. Let him ask of the Lord. Tonight we are going to be asking. I told you this wisdom. See, this wisdom comes to you from God. It's an impartation. Solomon discusses with God in the night in a dream. The next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom. Immediately. Immediately. Daniel. Daniel. I'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray. Daniel. When the king had a dream, could not interpret it. He said, let's just rest. He rested that night. That wisdom worked. This is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time. Uh -uh. When it comes on you, it speaks at once. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom. The operation. How does it work? I've told you what it is. I've told you how to access it. Shiva Kabra Takete Balada Bakasa. How does this wisdom work? Proverbs 18 verse 1. The first way is the sacrifice of meditation. This is how this, this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression. What did I say? The sacrifice of meditation. Proverbs 18 verse 1. The Bible says through desire. A man having separated himself. Seek it. And intermeddled with all wisdom. Meditation. Meditation. Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to find expression, and then that wisdom begins to find expression. Meditation. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6 please let's look at it quickly I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us Daniel 2 I cried for many years to the Lord I said Lord give me wisdom give me wisdom Daniel 2 from verse 14. Are you there? Say Amen. Let's read it quickly. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. They could not interpret the king's dream. Look at this wicked king. You had your dream and you forgot and you were angry. Just like many people in Nigeria, they blame people for their failed dreams. They wanted to be great, it didn't happen. And now they are angry at everybody. Listen, Daniel said this in verse 15. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. 16. Listen. He said, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him, that he should give him. This is what has killed a lot of people in 
in our generation. We are in a rush for everything. That's why the spirit of wisdom, the touch of wisdom, is not upon our lives. We are in a hurry to make money, a hurry to do everything, a hurry to get that job, a hurry to do everything in life. And so we don't consult with God, we don't pray, we don't have time to meditate, to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives. The Bible says, many are the counsels that are in a man's heart, however. It says, many are the purposes in a man's heart. However, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. We never do anything as in, in a ministry. Let me tell you something. Anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life, in a rush, run away quickly. Did you hear me? Run away quickly. Daniel said, uh-uh, king, you are rushing this thing too much. He said, give me time. If you give me time, I will meditate. And the Lord will reveal to me. And I will tell you. Let me show you another scripture. We'll soon get up and pray. Are you there? Verse 19. He said, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision when he, he had time and he went in the night meditating upon this thing and during the night time not the night moment the night time this thing was revealed to him every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and he's running on 200 and somebody's running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for Especially for some of us who are men. Make sure you think too. Don't make stupid decisions. No matter how much you think you know the answer, there is a way that cement right onto a man. But see, great leaders are not men of hasty decisions. They think through. No matter what the urgency is, learn this. It's a big secret in life. Daniel said, tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work. Hallelujah. The sacrifice of meditation. Everybody say, I receive grace to meditate. Some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation. This is how I get the messages for the week. I spend time, I pray and I just sit in his presence. Kapo Shatamaya. And allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men. When that wisdom comes, you know accurately what it is that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Number two, this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's not wisdom that is rehearsed. All of you, some of Please look at me, look at me. Let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing. How many of you have had someone come to counsel you? I mean, somebody come for you to counsel the person. And you know that you are not married, yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known. You did rehearse it. You did rehearse what to tell them. This is that wisdom. It's like you are prophesying. Somebody will ask you a question and you will begin to speak. You are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again. This is that dimension of wisdom. Are you listening to me? Somebody say I received that wisdom. Luke 21 verse 15. If you can project it using the amplified version. But let us look at it. Luke 21 quickly. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21.
verse 15. He said, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor then say. Listen, listen. This wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking. It's not something that you have that you say, I have it. I no. The moment you open your mouth, you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm. Hallelujah. And so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision. And many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable. And you keep quiet like Elihu. Suddenly you will open your mouth. He said, open your mouth and I will feel it. He didn't say, I'll open your mouth when I feel it. Open your mouth and I will feel it. Suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom. And they look at you. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. Ah, there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak, people will look at you and say, No, this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience. This is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak, you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom. Many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness, not wisdom. Or what came out was just scientific knowledge. I pray for someone tonight. I pray for someone tonight. May God make that when you meet your destiny helper, the right words that will be upon your lips, that will compel men. There are many people today moving around with business proposals. And they know what books say they should say. But the Bible says, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece. Could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work? Could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business? Could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones? Let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm. So that you will be noted for that wisdom. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 to 20. We are running. Matthew chapter 10. I feel the power of God in this place. We are going to pray this. This wisdom must hit somebody this night. This wisdom must hit somebody this night. Someone must write it in your jota that on this day you encounter a dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living. Verse 19. Matthew 10 verse 19. But when they deliver you up, that means when you are in trouble, he said do not be anxious. How or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour. He says it shall be given to you when? That means when you stand. Even if you don't know what to say. Some of you, when they invite you to preach, you are shaking. You are saying, oh God, what will I say? Hold on. Hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom. And you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips. Verse 20. He said, for it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father that does what? Speaks in you. So although you are seeing a man, what is really happening is the spirit of God speaking to a man. That's why you weigh the man and weigh the wisdom that is coming and say, what wisdom is this? I pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it Solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom, he deciphered accurately. And the Bible says his fame was spread abroad. 
there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories. People will share it. Let me tell you something. People have mouths that can talk. They can as well talk about your wisdom and say, when it comes to brother so and so, no, this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men. Doth not wisdom cry? Doth not wisdom cry? Look at how Solomon cried with this thing in the book of Proverbs. Solomon said, wisdom is begging people. Wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success. Doth not wisdom cry? Wisdom was crying and said, pay attention to me. With me are riches, wealth and honor. Yea, durable riches. But people will not listen. The third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas. Inspired thoughts. Job 32 verse 8. But there is a spirit in man. And that spirit can bring inspiration. Everybody say inspiration. That dimension of wisdom. How did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness? Look at me. They were in the wilderness. There was no source of help. But they got wisdom from God. And they built the tabernacle. In the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, I can kneel down and beg you tonight. Do not trivialize the power of what I'm telling you. There are some messages until you get to certain realms. It may not be useful. But when you get to that realm, you can never be a leader without this. You will waste your time. There are many frustrated men of God who have power but don't have wisdom. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to be a leader. It takes wisdom to be a father. It doesn't take age. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to command prosperity. It doesn't take years of time. It takes this wisdom. Lastly, dreams and visions. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. The Bible says, And the secret of the Lord, that secret was revealed to Daniel in the vision of the night. How many times have I laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night, God opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm. That's how some of these messages come. See, can I tell you something? Some of these great men like John Muen and the rest, the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom. It is this wisdom that transported it. There are others whose songs just came from musical argument. So it will change as time changes. But there are others it comes with a spirit. The wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant. Because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless. Because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us. So, he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners. Communicates his wisdom to us. Shiva katabalaraba. An idea that people will be dying for in the night. See, do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream? If he had a roommate, the roommate will never know that something has happened. He will just wake up in the morning. Come on now. Not the same person who slept. I pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom. I cried to God, yes, in my life. I said, Lord... I want you to give me this wisdom. 
this message I'm preaching to you tonight is an old message. It's an old message. I'm preaching to you my experience. I found this thing. And I said, come on, Lord. A 12-year-old boy, Lord, I'm available. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yes, they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody is far older than you. They'll say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this. Exploits by this dimension of wisdom. Through wisdom is any house built. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. There are times I'm meditating. Nobody distracts me. Because at that time, the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination, witty ideas, inventions, uncommon solutions that are not known to men. Hear me. Many of you will have, it may not speak now because of the time component of life, but wait until it starts speaking. See, there are some of you, I tell you the truth, Zaria is too small for you. Everybody is watching you, but you know that what is inside you is bigger than Zaria, is bigger than Nigeria. That young man called Zuckerberg, before Facebook went far, there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for 8 billion. He had not even become a millionaire then. He was just, they wanted to price his idea. He said, no, I know this thing will shake the world. 8 billion is too small. At that level, see, I tell you the truth. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I'm out of this country. There are some of you, the Bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of. This earth was not worthy of. You are seated in the crowd. Some of you are, so are looking at me like this. That's how one day you will sit down. Wisdom will give you a seat. There are no vacant seats. Only the one wisdom creates. The seats in Nigeria have finished. But wisdom can make room. It can give you a seat. I bring you a message. Stop wasting your life and wasting your time. Galloping in confusion. You can walk circumspectly. No matter what the price is. Pay it with wisdom. And you will know you are paying it for the last time. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let us give our generation what our fathers did not give. For the next five minutes we are going to cry. I want you to take it serious. You're going to cry your heart. The Bible says, let him ask of God. I have seen this in my life in a measure. I can tell you, there is something called the spirit of wisdom. It will shock men. Lift your voice and begin to cry. Zekete prekete belerererebos Anda prateka tayada basa Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Shoko protekete Thank God for your degree But just wisdom Thank God for PhD But just wisdom Thank God for books But just wisdom Shekete te pokotope Rekete koso telekosa Reko prosteria de vos That divine ability To take the word of God And translate it Come on pray sister Pray my brother Pray for the sake of your generation Pray it Say Lord I always knew I'm not ordinary 
Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. Hey! The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will see for things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you. Beyond your geographical limitation. Pray. 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 I receive the wisdom. Take it serious tonight. This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can be the difference between you and other people. So close, so close. A body attack. And a break and check it. Take it serious tonight. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Change my life. I'm ready to leave the realm where I am. To a higher land. I am tired of this level of finances. Tired of this level of leadership. Tired of this level of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray right now. And say, Lord, I receive a baptism of love for you. And grace to bless your people. Lift your voice and pray. A baptism of love. A baptism of love. Beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond prayer meetings. A baptism of love. Hallelujah. 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 Next prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, this night, kill greed and self centeredness from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, kill it. Greed. Self centeredness. Take it away from my life. That mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset, you are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never have the wish of that hope. Yes, so take a I kill self-centeredness. In the name of Jesus, I consider others better than myself. The spirit of peace depart from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, it goes from us. We are the blessed ones, empowered to bless mankind. Empowered to bless mankind. Empowered 
Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we will take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen. Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding standeth up. Standard, understanding put forth her voice. Listen. She stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of paths. Listen. She cries at the gates. And at the entry of the city. At the entrance of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. This is wisdom crying. Calling for attention. Calling businessmen for attention. Calling entrepreneurs for attention. Calling ministers for attention. Calling family people. Wisdom is begging and saying you have paid attention to other things. Can you not give me your attention? There is a baptism going on in this place. This night. He said, all oh, you simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of understanding hearts hear for I speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things he said all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing crooked wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver. Stop chasing money. Stop chasing money. Stop hustling. You will waste your time. Even if you get it, it will not be sustained. It will give you high blood pressure. It will give you stroke. Wisdom will give you success with rest. Listen. 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her. He said, I wisdom, I dwell with prudence, and I find out knowledge of witty inventions. Verse 14, we'll just read 14 to 16, and we'll stop. Listen, he says, counsel is mine. There is no foolishness when you walk with me. Sound wisdom. He said, I am understanding, and I have strength. Verse 15. By me, kings reign. Kings don't reign by election. Are you hearing me? By me, kings reign. This is wisdom telling you the things it has done. By me, kings reign. And nobles, and even the judges, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and the nobles. And all the judges of the earth. Listen, 17. I love those who love me. And those who seek me early shall find me. Those who seek me early. Those who seek me early. Hear this. Verse 18. Final verse. Riches that men die for. Riches that men die for. He said they are with me. They are not in Aso Rock. They are not in London. They are not in any bank. I tell you, 
they are with me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches, long lasting riches, and righteousness. We are going to pray. Final prayer point. You are going to say, Lord, let this wisdom fall on me. Many of you, as you pray this prayer, I tell you the wisdom of God will hit you. Some of you will sleep this night. You will wake up with visions. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it fall, O God. Let it fall, O God. Wisdom from above. Make leaders with wisdom. That is for wisdom that will shock the world. Wisdom that will shock the business world. Wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world. Aya. Wisdom that will shock men in your career. Wisdom that will make your degree meaningful. Wisdom to produce a model family. Wisdom to live perpetually in hell. Wisdom to command prosperity. Cry. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Open the heavens, O oh God. Open the heavens, O oh God. Open the heavens, O oh God. Receive a baptism. Shake it for the other. Koinonia, be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia, be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia, let it fall. Let it fall. Let business moguls arise from this wisdom. Lead us. The true secret of kingdom success. The true secret of undeniable kingdom success. Shake it, shake it, shake it, Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage. The day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly you will receive. You can argue it. You can sit down there and watch others. Or you can humble yourself and say, Lord, this is it. This is it. My spirit tells me this is it. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Out of the abundance of grace that has been given. I want to pray. I pray that as I declare, may it come upon somebody. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you gave me this message. This is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover. This is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom. This is the true secret of kingdom success. We started building last week and I want to pray. I tell you the heavens are open. In the name that is above all names. At the count of three, I tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way. At the count of three, I just like you to shout after the count of three. 
I receive and begin to receive it in your life. It will change your life. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Lord, let it fall. Take it. 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 Receive it. A baptism. A fire. A baptism. The fire of wisdom. The fire. It comes from a bowl. Let it change your status. The wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom in business. Be marked with wisdom in your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take his wisdom and rescue your family. Take his wisdom and change your city peers. Take his wisdom and change your marital status. Take his wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take his wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop taking forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last one, but let this wisdom take you to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Tonight, as many of you sleep, I declare the experience of Solomon. Let it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, tonight let it come by wisdom. In your place of meditation, let leadership wisdom come upon you. Hallelujah. I pray for you. The same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted. So that anywhere you saw them, you knew that these were Jacob's cattle. I pray for you. Because you have come for Koinonia tonight. Favor has been our mark in this place. But to that favor, I add wisdom to you. I add wisdom to you. Go ahead and give God thanks. Thank Him. I tell you something has happened to you this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money, so God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say, I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you, receive it. Amen. Ladies, don't say, we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and just tell him thank you for the miracles, for your grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just communicate your gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. It is a product of your grace. A product of your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Express your gratitude to him. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands in one minute and truly thank Him. We are taking our time to thank Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For our testimonies that you are a good God, our lives are the proof that you are dependable. We thank you. Zaprakatu segete palakus yena bakas. Zaprakus kete parutus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Good evening. Hallelujah. While while I sat back there, you know, I was just, let me tell you what was in my mind. I was just looking at us in, in my mind, truly and in my spirit. And wondering what your life will become like when God is done with you. Not just because of the testimonies. The testimonies are a token. They are a representation. It's proof to you that God is with you. But let me tell you, His commitment is more than these testimonies. The implication of His presence in your life is far bigger than this. This cannot be all why He's with you. And my joy is the knowledge. You see, vision, vision is the ability to see things the way it should be, not the way it is. Vision is the ability to see things that you can look at a weak brother, a weak sister, a weak gentleman, a weak lady, and you know the implication of what their lives will become on account of what they are receiving. Brothers and sisters, please listen. It's not a mystery. What we are becoming by the power of the Word of God and by the ministry of His Spirit is not a mystery. It's not something we are trying to guess. The picture is very clear. God has a portrait. God has an idea of what a believer should look like after a sufficient season of yieldedness. Your life should represent something and the Bible gives us an idea of it. Psalm 112. It said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. No matter how small that man is, blessed is the man that can take the risk of reverence for God and delights in his command. He says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, The generation of the righteous shall be blessed. He says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and that his righteousness endures forever. And you begin to read and see that he, the desire, his desire upon his enemies will come to pass. The enemies will look at him and only gnash their teeth. Listen, what God is making us become, let's trust Him. You may not trust a preacher, you may not trust yourself, but trust God. Trust God. Because let me tell you, 
You see, when he's done with us, it will be to him all the glory. You will watch your life and say, my God. So this is what God can do. You get the glory. You get the glory. You take the honor. I just want to say, you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. So in my life, be glorified. Be glorified.
Lord, we declare that forever you will be glorified in our lives. Forever you will be glorified in this house. This remains a place where you will be glorified. That men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives. Thank you for making us signs and wonders. Epistles of your grace. Epistles of your majesty. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be charged like enough and allow His Word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to His ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, He stretches His hands to bring you. Not that He stretches to leave His position. So the idea is not to invent your way. You don't seek God at His terms. His pride. And let me tell you something. Please listen to me. Many preachers are getting it wrong. The way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line. It is true. Now, I, I must confess to you, it is difficult to build people holistically. It is very difficult. Because our individual callings, you see, the way God works with men is that because of His call upon your life, He tilts you towards a dimension of Himself. And you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery. The side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas. Are we together now? If God has called me into the ministry of healing, for instance, chances are that because of my focus, my staying in that area, all the books I read, all the conferences I go to will be along the healing ministry. Chances are that I will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with God. That is the reason why the unity of the body is important. Because seeking God in that way has a side effect. But he created the unity of the body to give that balance. Now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line. And very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension. It was produced by we preachers. So I can, you can see people who are prosperous, powerful, but they have no regard for spiritual things. No regard. No intelligence. No nothing. Excellence, yes sir. Administration, yes sir. Leadership, yes sir. Prosperity, as much as we know, financially speaking, yes sir. But their spirits are, it's unfortunate. The knowledge of God, zero. Passion for God, zero. Evangelism, zero. Conformity to the life and the character of Christ, zero. Every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people, the communicators, the shapers, the molders of their understanding are to be blamed. And so I admit to you as a man of God that it is difficult to build people holistically. It's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with God to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Our passions are not only dependent on the Holy Spirit, they are also dependent on our age ranges. Please listen carefully. This is not what I'm teaching tonight. I just want to express something. A young man seeking God from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30, because of the, the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions, with resources. Are we together? So it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available, for instance. A man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation. Their development has come into the equation. There are responsibilities. At this point, the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone. They affect society. Is that true? They affect the faith of another person. They affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising, biologically or otherwise. And then a man who is from 50 upwards, his passions, his interest is also different. So, you have to be cheerful. You have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If I listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years, he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge. But the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him. I will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when God calls a man, God does not only give you a message. God gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective. Most preachers don't know this. If I preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years, let me tell you the truth. They are not going to be touched by my message. They will only be impressed that the things they learned old, I learned young. At the end of that message, they won't stand up and say, my, ah, I couldn't sleep. No, there is nothing I will tell them that is worth lacking sleep. The mistake has been made. The lessons have been learned. Their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation. Please, listen to me. Don't hate anybody, but be careful who mentors you. Because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset, but the interest, the perspectives. It's important. The Bible says David served his generation. Served his generation. A man can be talking to you who has estates. A man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor. A man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world. And the truth is he does not really have any need. A man can be talking to you from the perspective of his Sabbath. He has entered his Sabbath experientially. There are some things that he will not have the time to teach you. Are we together? They will be focusing on maintaining certain levels, not helping you get there. Because he has arrived there. And chances are that when you learn from him, you will only maintain your current level. He's teaching you maintenance, not growth. Are we together? The way I teach and guide people 10, 15 years ago, I'm still a young man, but it's not the same context. Are we together? People are married now. They have families. Their needs are shifting. Their needs are changing. So a young man can have a fellowship where 99% of the people are unmarried. 99% are students, just got admission. The context of his teaching, his example, his emphasis. I don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that. No. 
the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the holy spirit pressing into god are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be god to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed i don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of god the power of the holy ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about god there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know god based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of God. When he was teaching you how to know God, you were probably a student who had all the time. But right now you are not only a worker, you are a supervisor. And he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love God. Are you seeing that now? And that may no longer work. And you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every faith has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence. Remember he told Elijah, eat for the journey is far. By the time you become a managing director, who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year, the man of God must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal. Otherwise, you will find out that you apply your, your eight hours with God every day formula and you find out that you are knowing God but your company is crashing. And then you say, Kai, what is all this? Then he will tell you, leave the company and focus on God. Then you focus on God and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective. Many believers are afraid because the things they used to do the transitions in their lives no longer afford them all the time again. I never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied. Time is gold for me. You see that? That means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer. Are you getting blessed? So we have people who know God, but they are not blessed. We have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of God upon their lips. The reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers Christ to them. Being a man of God is not just having power and the ability to speak. Hallelujah. I used to preach a lot faster than I do now. But 
I came to a point where I had to ask myself, what exactly is the purpose of preaching? What is the purpose of communication? And I found out that the purpose is understanding. It is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you. You may be impressed by their shouting, Woo! and you will be so flattered. Let me tell you the truth with all humility. You see, there are levels when God brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven. So settle down and build people. You see that? Yes. I will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the Spirit is upon me. To be proving whether I have access to revelations or not. It's not pride. These realities have been proven. The thing to prove now is the hand of God by the lives you raise. Now, you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing. Because at that level, he's seeking for validation. So his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall, he can go back and lock the door for three days. Say, Lord, what happened? That's the reason why you see people like Papa Ia Deboe. They just come and say, the Lord bless you. And I mean, they are so not concerned whether you shout or not. They, they know what they are giving you. It's up to you to believe whether you have it or not. Someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking, you see that they are not interested. The point has been proven. You can't keep proving a point forever. You must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people. My pride now, let me tell you this. At the level God has brought me by His grace, my pride is no longer my results. My pride is your results. If I celebrate my results now, tea and bread, everybody come and look, God gave me tea. It's a sign that I've failed. God has been fair enough to me. Now my own result is your result. Are you seeing that now? So my focus has shifted. It's not just on myself. God has helped me. God has tried for me. I will be wicked to still think about myself. I don't go to preach and wondering, will they give me an honorarium? And if yes, how much will it be? No, no. My heart, God sees, is that Lord, you have helped me. You have granted me understanding. Now Lord, let your word prevail over your people. You see that? So that from nowhere, a young man rises with a strange level of grace. A family is able to capture dimensions of God that they can reveal. You are finding purpose. You are finding your place in life. You are causing and stirring revivals across territory. This for me is my joy. A time must come. Fatherhood is not all about growing old. It's all about pouring yourself into people. And witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of God. The truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite. You can know them. It is the pursuit of God that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, the keys that you need to piece together. Like you can get to a final year and your lecturer says you are finished. You say I finished what? You say you finished the course. It doesn't mean you have finished learning. But you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate. That can happen in the spirit. That you can learn the things you need to know about certain things. And God says now, your message is clear. Your priority, what keeps you fresh now, is not just new revelations, but the freshness of His presence. That's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted. Are we together? When you listen to Papa Deboe or you listen to Benny Hill and they talk, the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you. But why do you receive it? It comes with a freshness that 45 years of ministry has not eroded. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. 
God sees my heart. I detest a ministry where only the man of God or the man of God and a few people, they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, there are the masses of followers, as we call them, who broke, weak, don't know God. And for many years, they remain loyal to that anointing. It's not God's way of doing things. Three years was enough for Jesus to build certain people. And after that, like the foxes of Samson, he released them. He said, guys, I know you want me to stay, but it is expedient that I go. Because it's time for you to be on the stage too. And did they succeed? They turned the world upside down. I look at a few people who God is helping. God is helping all of us. But I look at us and our spiritual results. I look at our financial results. I look at our results of influence and all. And I'm telling you, my heart is gladdened. I know. I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate. But at the end of your life, I still say it again. You will stand back and watch yourself and say, God, so this is where you are going to take me to. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute. Say, Lord, where I have not been attentive to you, take away my pride. Take away that pride. Give me the grace. from out of your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Pray. Lord, let that man of God within me rise. Let that entrepreneur within me rise. Let that Deborah, let that Milka, let that Hannah, Rachel, within me rise. This is why I am here. Let that man of kingdom influence within me rise. It is for your glory. It is for your kingdom. An heir, as long as he's a child, different not from a slave. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Lord, I will listen. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. I'm, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it to surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying. One mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and will pray. We're going to have a time of intense prayer, praying in the spirit, repositioning yourself, times of encounters, times of restoration, of mantles, of graces, times of opening of new spiritual dimensions. Yes. The prophetic is there, but needs to be enlarged. The apostolic is there, but needs to be enlarged. It's true that the healing ministry is there, but it needs to be enlarged. Capacity. Please don't miss it. This is not some activity of men, no. 
7 o'clock you are here. No matter how long it takes to start, just be here anywhere. If you, there is no space somewhere, this is not a koinonia program. This is a visitation that God is bringing to the land. It will be a time of strange miracles. Few hours, but the impact will linger upon your spirit. Make sure you fast. Please fast. Let the little children fast. Give them a little time. They may not be able to fast six to six. But except you are pregnant or under medical supervision, then that, that's all right. But even at that, doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow. Are we together? Let your spirit be alive. Please, off, off, useless movies, films, just suspend it for a while. I beg you, they don't have to be wrong. All these social media distractions minimize it. Focus on God. Focus on God. Let what we play from your phone and your screens be worship. Give God one week and let Him expand you. You can't put new wine in an old wine skin. So let God replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. The protocol department will make arrangements. We'll try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people. And we'll try to finish on time. But it's going to be seven days of fire in this place. Seven days of the strange move of the Spirit. Epochal revelations of the truth of God's Word. That if and when you handle them, will turn your life around. Hallelujah. Don't come alone. Invite someone. Years ago, when I went for an Arbonke crusade, there was no seat. I stood there for six hours. Six solid hours. Because I was hungry. When you are hungry, you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor. Your eyes are fixed. He said, if your eye be single, your heart will be full of life. Don't just come to hear, come to see. You can argue with what you hear, but you cannot argue with what you see. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. The Lord is saying, but my eyes are seeing. It is what you see that you get, not just what you see. The Lord put a strong burden in my heart this night. Just a few minutes. Let's talk about it. The spirit of wisdom. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit, I will sing all the wonders of your word. I will sing. I will see of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forever sing your praise. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom. So the Bible tells us, it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. It does not stop him from being a human being. It is possible to live without the wisdom of God at work in you. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom. The question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom? Because you only ask when you don't have it. But how do I know that I do not have wisdom? Because remember the Bible says every man is right in his own eyes. So based on what parameter, what parameter do I use to arrive at the conclusion that I am bankrupt of wisdom? There is nobody I know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise. Is that true? You try telling somebody who 
considers himself a gentleman and say, I don't think you are exactly wise. Then you think the person will laugh at you and say, Wow, I'm just learning that. No, you're going to have a big problem. The person is not wise. Me? Am I a madman? Do I look like one? But the Bible says, If any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom, so the first assignment is not to ask. The first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of God, that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life. Are we together now? There must be a system in the kingdom that God has provided to help men understand. So I can come to the conclusion because you see, as human beings, it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives. Especially for believers. We are people of faith. And sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives. It's not natural for men to admit. Are we together now? Yes. When you tell someone he can't cook, say, no, 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 I can cook. What are you? I mean, this is it. You are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable. And the person is saying, I can cook. Because in his eyes, this is a wonderful meal. Are we together? You are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart. And you are saying, no, no, no. You are not dressing smart. No, no, no. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very, very okay. So it is difficult. I'm explaining to you this. this if any man lack wisdom, it's a very deep process to arrive at a point. Let me tell you, realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of God. The arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission. We can secretly desire to be wiser. We can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in. But to outspokenly admit, no. It's very uncomfortable. Are we together? But the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask who? Let him ask of God that giveth unto how many men? So the manifestation of the wisdom of God in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people. It's not privy to apostles and prophets. No. The giving of this operation of the Spirit is given to all men. He says he does so liberally. And then an upbraided not, and it shall be given. That means if I look at your life and I do not see wisdom, I am safe to conclude at certain things. Number one, that you have not received. And you receive not because you have not asked. And you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life. Are you seeing that now? That means if you look at my life and your life, and I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men that comes to naught, the wisdom of God. If it is not in my life, the Bible says, if I ask, it should be given. So if it is not in my life and God is benevolent, it means that I have not genuinely asked. And I have not asked because I have not seen the need. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. That means something about my understanding. I have indoctrinated myself into believing that I have sufficient wisdom. Let me tell you the formula that the Bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not. Wisdom is very vocal. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. There are fruits in your life and my life that validate the presence of wisdom. There has to be fruit in your life and my life. There are things I cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not. I leave that to God. Wisdom is not part of those. Because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results. 
children there talks of the results the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of God and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of god in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you. The spirit of God is at work in you. But that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome. The fear that plagues people, you will always fear until you know what to do. And he himself knew what he ought to do. The Bible took out time to talk about anxiety, Philippians chapter 4. And when you read from verse 6 to 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. Please give it to us. Let's, let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom. It says, be the word cheerful there does not just mean be careless. It means be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. We see prayer again. You leave that. We are going to touch that later. But it says be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. There is an information that can take away anxiety. Anxiety, let me tell you something. It's not proof that Satan is around you. It's proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. It's an uncomfortable truth, we must admit. Our world is full of people dying of anxiety. Where will this come from? Where will, I mean, what, no, no. The pain and fear. Jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry. Spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance. It says, yet your father, yet not Solomon, arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel, is like one of these. Anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. Anxiety stems from uncertainty. There is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives, financially speaking, spiritually speaking. So you are about to um, do certain things, embark on your life's journey, and then because of the gaps of uncertainty, you find out that there is worry and anxiety. Unbelief comes in, fear comes in. Because of fear, you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail. So you become possessive, self-centered, angry, and all these other elements come in. I found a very interesting scripture. We're going to read it and then I'll define for you what wisdom is. Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100. Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100. Are we there? Read it please. One to read. Ah uh ah. -uh. One to read. Thou through their, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever before me. Next verse. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation. The last verse. I understand more than the ancient. Stop, stop. Don't rush it. I understand more than my enemies. You made me wiser than my enemies. You made me wiser than my teachers. 
and you made me wiser than the ancients. And there is a key. We are coming there. Are we together? It says, Thou by thy commandments, by thy laws, you have made me wiser. Wiser than my enemies. So I can rise. Wiser than my teachers. Wiser than the ancients. Because I have kept your secrets. Psalms 104 verse 24. Psalm 104 verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. Everybody say results. I want you to read it just the first line, but change works with results. Ready? One to read. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy results. How did the results come about? In wisdom thou hast made them all. Lord, I look at your life and it's full of mighty works. Results. And the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God. It is by engaging wisdom, wisdom, that these possibilities have been made manifest. And the earth is full of your riches, which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom. There is a relationship between results and wisdom. There is a relationship between riches and wisdom. How manifold, how multifaceted, how awe-inspiring are your works. What is wisdom? I put a definition here. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions. Scriptural solutions to life challenges and engaging them appropriately. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. Possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. What is wisdom? Knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. If there is no doing, it is not wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Possessing the scriptural solution. There are many solutions. There are many ways that seem it right unto a man. But the end thereof will justify what way he took. So scriptural solutions to life's challenges and then having the possession of those solutions you engage them appropriately you are wise if you do that are we together so you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others and the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality. And there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality lavishly. That regardless of your age, listen carefully, regardless of your educational background, regardless of what your level of orientation, that you can be, um, you can have a, an influence of this dimension of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. And all of a sudden, your life opens up wonder after wonder. A comprehension of the scriptural solutions. Listen to me. If I ask everyone now, write your prayer request and bring it here right now. There are people who are going to ask for pages, not pieces of papers. Every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer. Is that true? The Bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes 
to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 4. Please don't trivialize what I'm teaching you tonight. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's using a business terminology now. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8. Exalt her. Personifies wisdom now. Exalt her like you would do a lady you love. Exalt her. Is that true? Like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves. He says, exalt her. And there is a reward for exalting her. Prize her above all else. And she shall do what? What is responsible for promotion? It is true that God is the lifter of men. But the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom. Meaning, if you are in a position for a long time, it's not just an attack from hell, but it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. The spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life. It not only creates motion, it creates an upgrade to your life. It is because of the presence of this possibility that the Bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Now listen. Ah. It says she shall bring thee to honor. It did say she shall bring thee honor. Honor is here. It's not just, a, it's not just an attribute. It's a realm of existence. That wisdom can, like an usher, say, follow me. I will lead you somewhere. Regardless of your background, as a preacher, as a businessman, as a mother, a father, wisdom can usher you. And whilst you follow her foolishly, you will get into a realm. The name of that realm is honor. Not an event. It is how you live. Honor. That wisdom can bring a man to honor. When thou dost embrace her. Are we together? Like Ruth held on to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. I have seen the value of your presence in my life. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. This is what people are looking for. They are looking for promotion. In the spirit, they are looking for promotion in finances, promotion in influence. Men of God are struggling, trusting God, increasing membership, increasing whatever. This is the formula God gives us, and we ignore Him, and then we keep searching around. Verse 9 this is what the Bible says She shall give to thy head, hallelujah, an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver. Who is the she here? Wisdom. Wisdom. That for embracing wisdom, it can veto your background. It can veto any other thing in your life. Brothers and sisters, and bring you to this possibility. This is the realm that we all desire to get there. And the Bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom. Are we together? Yes. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built. A house is built. Not through desire. Through desire the intention to build is there. But the actual building is through wisdom. This ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom. Every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world Every great enterprise that you see and admire, everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. Years ago, I was listening to Pat Robertson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. 
And he said as a young man, when he was about to start ministry, he said he went to the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm a young man about to start. Give me three things. Number one, he said, give me wisdom. Number two, he said, give me favor. Number three, he said, give me the anointing of the Spirit. Ah, I went back to God too. And I said, Lord, thank God I'm still young. Number one, give me wisdom. Boy, I stayed there before moving to favor. Because I knew that that wisdom, it, I, my life was so bankrupt of it. How else would I have gotten it? Our society is full of unwise people. It's not an insult, it's a description. They are sincere people. But their decisions and their results are very clear. That the wisdom of God, of God, not Sophia, not human wisdom. We are talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that. The wisdom of God. The faculty to produce results as God, at God's level. The spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. The reason why Joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed. Joshua always had the anointing. The anointing was there. But the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. He was already full of the spirit. And yet Moses was told to lay hands on him. How do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit? And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not full of wisdom. Full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. No wonder when Moses died, there was nothing much for God to tell him again. He said, Moses... My servant is dead. Joshua, my only encouragement is for you to be strong. You already have the spirit of wisdom. Mm. You have it. Just be strong. You are a young man. And I know that leading these people is difficult, but there is a spirit in you. You will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder. Leadership is by the spirit of wisdom. Mm. Let me tell you this. Listen. Any man on earth Listen to me carefully. Any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him, respect him. Human beings are not stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can have a crowd of foolish people, but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that. Jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him. There was something he was telling them. There was something contained in his teachings. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. Not knowledgeable. Hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain. There are families that if they knew this, weeping will stop. It's true. There are individuals that if they know this, weeping will stop. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The book can be opened. When the book is opened, then tears. I look at times in my life when I was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom. And I looked at the tears that came from my eyes. But no more. His wisdom has come. Hmm. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. 
And for preachers, we need this so much. You know, most times, we don't start ministry with wisdom. We start ministry with passion. Passion. And then, your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing. And then, while the ministry starts going, at a point, you hook in one place, still anointed, but wisdom. You can't move further because the promoter is wisdom. The exalter is wisdom. The one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom. Sharing lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise. Because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things. You can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit. But God is changing someone's story. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I have watched people, do you know, um, sometimes I sit down and I look at people, truly speaking. When I look at people, I fight tears because I know what they are doing wrong. I don't fight tears because of their situation. I know I fight tears because I can explain why their lives are that way. I have seen well-meaning, lovely men and women of God that I love and honor with all my heart. But I look at their lives the same way my life was and I know where they are missing it. Please, no result is a mistake. Please learn this. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged. A man does not just become powerful. No, no. A man does not just last in ministry. A man does not just become anointed. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. The fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done. Your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released then you know that challenge has come to an end. Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way. Not just from human terms. You will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life. Years ago, I'm not a social media person, but the Lord spoke to me, revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry. And this is what the Lord told me. I said, Lord, how will your word get to people and all of that? Yes, we are going to have a TV ministry, but that's for another time. But how is it going to happen? And this is what the Lord told me. At that time, they sell messages. You don't upload messages online. And the Lord said, this is the strategy. Don't sell any message. Let the messages be packaged and put it online. I will give it wings to the ends of the earth. The wisdom of God. It never made sense then. What is this? Who has the time to download heavy MVs of an audio, not video? People are not, I mean, when somebody can buy a CD and slot it. Who do you think you are? But when his wisdom comes in, something that looks so foolish, go round Jericho seven times. Just go round. It has never been done. Oh God, just go around. And at the seventh time, that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho. Brothers and sisters, that one act till today, this ministry will never recover from it. That one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom. That's it. Hmm. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings. The spirit of wisdom 
is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry. Please hear me. There is no ministry except you want to manipulate people. Don't be angry at men of God that you see manipulating people. So let me tell you, you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance. You've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. Otherwise, it will wear your grace out. You will cry one day to death. You need it in your life. There are many Christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there. The decisions are always leading to pain. The decisions are always leading to retrogression. Remember I told you that wisdom is justified by her children. So if I claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything I do is moving me back, I should check. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. There are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? of God, God is faithful. No, sir. Don't, don't, don't. That does not look like faithfulness. Is God challenging us? Some of our parents are pastors. They've been pastors for many years. I'm not talking about finances. No growth. There is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved. Lives have been transformed. Pain after pain. Let me tell you, repetition of pain it's a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom. It is the principal thing the Bible says. It is the principal thing. There are ministries that rise and fall. They rise to a level. They are doing so well. And then at a point you find out that things start to nose dive. No scandal. No nothing. Just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level. And they come down. The scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom. Standing, let me use someone, come, come, show. Standing between this gentleman and his destiny, whether it is spiritually speaking, whether it is financially speaking, the obstacle. Other forces are there like favor and the rest. But it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces. You know why the Bible says it is the principal thing? Because all other forces depend on it. It is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play. The anointing, this and that. It is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life. It is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated. It is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come. All other manifestations are dependent on wisdom. So, in the interim, there are many other forces. But the principal force, wisdom. Are we together? So, I do not... I know that I should get there... I know that if favor comes, I will arrive there. I know that there is a way I can be healed. I know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied. But what is that way? What is that way? And how do I engage it? It is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation. Because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things. And then the spirit of wisdom comes. I can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom. His results. Her results. It is true. Wisdom is justified by her children. If you accept this thing tonight, then we can finish up that verse. If any of you lack results, if any of you lack results, if you lack results, you lack wisdom. 
if any of you lack results, if your spiritual life lacks potency, if your finances lack potency, if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency, no promotion, no growth, nobody desires your grace, you are living an unrewarded life, spiritually and otherwise, it says that if you lack this, it's a sign that the wisdom of God is not at work in you. Hallelujah. Let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works. This is the core of what I'm teaching tonight. Most people are aware. We've taught several teachings on the Holy Spirit and we've taught on wisdom. You can make reference to my teaching, what wisdom is this? But the operation, how it works, is where I think that most people have not been able to access it. Mm. How is the spirit of wisdom? How does it operate? How do I activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me? Ready? Let's finish up the scripture. James chapter 1 and verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5 There is wisdom in the name of Jesus There is wisdom in the name of Jesus If, if any one of you lack results which is a product of lack of wisdom what's the first thing? Let him you have not because you ask not. Not because God is unable to give it. Let him ask. Let him ask. Let him pray. Let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when I begin to pray, my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom, but also activate its operation. If prayer can bring wisdom, then prayer can make it work too. Are we together now? Yes. Let him pray. I can know a man functioning under the influence of the Spirit of God by the results that come from his prayer. Not just his prayer. I need to see the results that come from your prayer. The reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work they cannot see the results from it do you know that praying in the spirit captures something the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the lord of glory there was something paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access. Prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom. Not just bringing the anointing in your life. The functionality, the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray. While they prayed, they didn't know what to do. How do we advance the gospel across this territory? They prayed and they fasted. And the spirit of wisdom came. Separate me Paul and Barnabas. This is the strategy. They stood before Jericho. Listen, when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you, you will never fear. When you see challenges, all you need to know is to wait till the answer comes. Many of us never wait. We go ahead and say, let the answer follow me. And we call it faith and it damages us into pieces. May never live to have a second chance. When Joshua got before Jericho, the Bible says the fence of Jericho could host five chariots, fortified tooth and nail. To a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence. The fence of Jericho was like CGC. How do you penetrate the place? Do you shoot? Is it an arrow? Is it a gun? Do you jump? The spirit of wisdom. 
said, don't worry. They circumcised themselves and set their heart apart. And an angel just came and revealed a strategy. Do this, do that. And the Lord spoke the spirit of wisdom. Go round the city seven times. And on the seventh day, go round seven times. The spirit of wisdom. Many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy, yes, but what was uttered is the wisdom of God. Go and bath seven times. Go and bath seven times. It is the solution not to all problems, to your problem. Meaning someone else will do it, not directed by God and not get any solution. You see that? The spirit of wisdom is God's customized solution for your challenges. It's not generic. It's personal. That's why I said it is not, it is not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is, is universal in application. Like you say, if someone is hungry, eat. God can tell you if you are hungry, dance. Now, that does not make sense. But that is his solution for you. Go and bath seven times. And the guy felt insulted. Abba, I'm a captain of the Syrian army. And he went to bath. The seventh time, the Bible says his skin became fresh. You see, let me tell you. This is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense. And still getting results. They are not making sense. Is that they are doing it as directed. The spirit of wisdom came. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. This is the fountain of wisdom. Mary knew. She did, they would have said, ah, ah, Jesus, look, 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 look. The, the person who sells this wine is here. He can tell you. Jews were not foolish people. They knew how to crush wine for kings. Whatever he tells you, do. Notice that no single miracle of Jesus was repeated twice. The results were repeated many times. But the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue. At a certain time, he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes. At a certain time, he did something else. Look at it. But we keep repeating the same thing and we just... Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The wisdom of God. When his wisdom comes to you, then you get up and do what he told you to do. Then your life becomes a wonder. Lord, where are we going to get the venue for this meeting? I saw in my visions overflow. Lord, I can't active your venue. I can use my brain to look at several venues. Which venue in Zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me? Just keep praying. Shakabakatakatabata. CGC, the spirit of wisdom. See that? As at the time the Lord spoke, the building had not even been expanded. This, when the spirit of wisdom speaks, don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know. No. Wisdom is manifested in prayer. When we pray, the spirit of wisdom begins to speak. Learn this. Most of us, we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom. Lord, what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life? And the Lord says, pray. And we pray after five minutes. We say, God, you are not speaking. Please, good night. And we just, we cheat ourselves there. You don't pray as long as you want. You pray till the answer comes. It's not the issue of ten minutes or one hour. It is when it comes. There is an object to your prayer. And you begin to pray. When, when, when CGC became full and the overflows became full, it was obvious that when there was a program here, there was no other venue that could take us. Lord, what is going to be the way out of this? When you know this, you know that there's nothing called impossible. Impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of God. When the wisdom of God comes, it will turn a mountain, I tell you, into a level playground. Is God speaking to you?
Mm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solutions and were able to host people. Overflow 3 is bigger than overflow 1, 2, and 3. And I mean overflow 1 and 2 together. The wisdom of God. You see, you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way. Then you look and say, ah, why didn't I think about it? Because your small brain cannot think about it, my brother. You need the wisdom of God. Joseph, after he finished interpreting the dream, then the spirit of wisdom came. Hear the spirit of wisdom speaking. Let Pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that. When there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing Moses. Moses could not do his work because there were so many people. And God told him, Mr. Man, you are going to kill yourself. Let the spirit of wisdom guide you. Set men, thousands and hundreds and fifties. And then appoint elders to take care of them. Then you just play supervisory roles. Ah, and Moses found rest. He would have died and said it's the will of God. How many pastors die because they love God, but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs? By the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by His wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. It's God speaking to us. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Shout it, prayer. prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray, and the devil says it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Men who pray access the wisdom of God. They come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions. Very, very strange solutions. Sometimes solutions that don't make sense. Do not, do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer. When you say we have come to our wit's end, then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom. Number two. How is wisdom activated? Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are prayed in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
is the wisdom of God working in your life. Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you are not aligning sufficiently. That's why many men of God don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half. The year is not halfway gone. And you wonder, what do I do? Inspiration comes in the place of meditation. Never forget. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder. Not just on anything. To ponder on truth. Ponder on the word of God. Not just to mutter, but to ponder, to think. It's called imagination. It's not like imagination. It is called imagination. The creation of images by the Spirit. Genesis 11. Before Nimrod began to build, he called the people and they began to meditate. Meditation is not just sitting down under a tree. That's a wonderful, um, um, what they call it, a wonderful way of stimulating meditation. But meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create. Creativity is a product of meditation. Let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works. The spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit. It's the first dimension of the Holy Spirit we see in Genesis chapter 1. Creation. The spirit of wisdom creates. It creates solutions. See, what I'm teaching you is, is, is a jackpot to your success in life, if you understand it. Creation. The solution to every problem you seek already exists in Christ. But there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit. It is called creation. It is called the power of imagination. Where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens. Many of us are not creators. Creation is not just by speaking. It is out of the abundance of the heart. When that incubation has happened, then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest. Not many people will teach you this thing I'm teaching you. The spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it. This is a kind of question where both yes and no would shame you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first. You see, you see how powerful wisdom is? Because the youngest can drop it and the oldest say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it. Down to the last person. Woman, where are your accusers? Go. Neither do I condemn you. This is the spirit of wisdom. It is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men. Hmm. That instead of everybody dying, let's make a caricature out of Satan. It's called the hidden wisdom. Let one man come and let the whole world enter in him. Then let him die. So that one man came and Satan kept looking for him. At a point, the Holy Ghost restrained his hand. And Satan began to prevail. And Satan manipulated men to kill Jesus. And he ran to hell. He said, demons, did you watch what happened? I can't believe it. I killed Jesus. And to his shock, he saw Jesus in hell. And he said, no, this is a joke. You can't be in hell. Say, yes, I'm here. Because when you kill sinners, they go to hell. And so I died sin. And here I am in hell. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give 
me the seeds. And when the keys were given to him, he dislodged principalities and powers, made a public show of them. And then he not only resurrected, he resurrected with many who had died. They were in the streets of Jerusalem. Everybody saw him. And he said, guys, this is it. You will, um, you will go to heaven, but I have to be the firstborn among the resurrected. So let me go to heaven quickly. I'll come back and then you guys will go. And he went to heaven, poured his blood according to Hebrews in the tabernacle, became the high priest, and then he returned. The guys went and he went to the disciples. All hail and back. All power in heaven. He disarmed Satan not through power, through wisdom. Are we together? Listen, let me teach you something. I walk in the anointing. Many results are not dependent on power, force. Wisdom is really what brings dominion. Because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. You engage through knowledge. Not just by trying to force things. It's the ministry of the angels to do that. They are the enforcers of the word of God. They confirm the word of the servant. But wisdom is solution. That's why sometimes you see me ministering to people. And you see me doing stupid things. I can hold somebody's hand and the Holy Spirit can say, let that person shout Jesus. And then just shout Jesus. And then the person is falling. And you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. I'm as shocked as you. We are all watching. The wisdom of the spirit. You will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout Jesus and then he shouts and looks at you say I've done it. They do it again. Because it was just copying. This is one of the big mistakes of we young ministers. We copy acts without the spirit that brought them. Are we together? Yes. Meditation. This is where many of us have missed it. That you sit before the Lord. What's that song? Brooding over every darkness. You are called. Listen. Light to shine from God. How can light come out of darkness? That's what the Bible says. It said God who has commanded light to come out of darkness. That means the answer is right there with you. In your chaos. The light. The raw material. Sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen. When you plant corn, the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of. It's a principle. He's brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine in darkness. You are brooding, brooding over all my darkness. You are causing light to shine from God. So in the midst of that financial hardship, sit down there. That's when creation happens. You're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere. Sit in it. By the rivers of Babylon, in the midst of the captivity, I sat down there and a vision was opened to me. We run away from challenges. The miracle is right there. Sit down. There's got to be a way. Lord, my wife, no, I prayed on There's got to be a way. And all of a sudden, you allow him to impregnate your mind. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you this. Your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this. It will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding. Many of us don't sit down. Jobless people don't sit down to allow creation to happen. They just loiter around. Sir, can you give me a job? And God is saying, I want to speak to you. No, God. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to marry. They said, I, I can't marry because I don't have a job. Me, I want to. And God says, sit down now. If we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down. Not worrying. Just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down. When other people are snoring their destinies, you sit quietly. There's got to be a way to my life. Lord, everything is not working. Nine prayer requests since last year, nine of them not answered. 
you are not a liar. Jesus, speak to me. And you are just playing. You know, I told, I get, who did I give an assignment? Was it us? For school of ministry students. No, sometimes I don't know the difference. But do it. Still do it. Go and play worship. You don't just sit down and beds are just making noise. Worship doesn't distract you. It steals your spirit. And then you sit down. Sometimes for hours, the flesh will never allow you to sit down. This flesh you see. Once you sit down, you just start thinking, Ah, but that lady is really beautiful. You see, don't stop. Still sit down there. Ah, but my father, you know, to be honest, do you know that I didn't have a good upbringing? Don't worry. This is the flesh trying to distract something. A time will come, your flesh will be frustrated. It will give up. It's one of the benefits of fasting. The flesh is empowered by the health of your body. It takes advantage of food. So when, when food is minimal, it, it alters the interruption of the flesh. Yes, sir, it does. Ultimately leading to boosting your faith. But that's how it works. And you sit down. Lord, there has to be a way. And the Lord sits down and says, But you know you have 100,000. And then in scripture, just opens up. And now, this is God, the spirit of wisdom coming to you now. And looks at it and says, except a corn falls in the ground. And the Lord can speak to you and say, that hundred thousand, that is your last money. I'm not saying do it. Go and sow it. You are not doing donation. Just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die. And sow it somewhere. The moment you do that, the same spirit that spoke to you, now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to work in you Sometimes he will close the door of any physical helper in your life. Pain is a very good way of activating wisdom. Some of us, until you go through certain levels of pain, wisdom will never work in your life. It's not all pain that is demonic. Hear what I'm telling you. You always receive hundred, hundred thousand from your father. So every time they are saying the wisdom of God, you say yes. But what you ask mean is the money is coming. And then your father says, well... Um, I had a dream and I didn't see myself giving you money for five months. Say, so what are you saying? Say exactly that. Um, a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that I got rich that you are benefiting from. The same voice said I should leave you alone. You may insult and get angry, but after two weeks, you sit down and in your anger, you frown, you frown, you frown, and then you just open a scripture anyhow. Lord, help me. And then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in Zarephath. What did she do? You have been reading it because your stomach is full. Now you read it with your stomach empty. Then child, thy light break forth. And you see something you never saw. Ah! God commanded a woman, but she was not aware she was commanded. But the Bible says God already commanded her. Could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving? Because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether the, the message arrived to her or not, is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God would say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot. Creation happens in my life through meditation. I have explored the power of imagination. This is not some zodiac, Scientology, metaphysical thing. This is a principle. Listen to the advice that God gave Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's attempt to round up. He said, this book of the law, please give it to us, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate. 
I thought I was. Do you know I literally was seeing it? <laughs> Truly speaking, <laughs> you guys are delaying. Okay, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Listen, but thou shalt meditate therein. Meditate therein, not meditate any other place. You don't meditate on what you want. You meditate on the word of God. Not just look at a newspaper and say, Hi, again. Boko Haram. And you are looking. And you are thinking about a solution for your church. It won't come that way. Are we together? Thou shalt meditate there in day and night. When you meditate, an information will come from it. Then you observe to do. And then your way becomes prosperous. You don't ask first. You sit down and allow the creative force of God's wisdom come to your life. Lord, my wedding is five months. All we have is 100,000. The budget is 2.5. There's got to be a way out. Not, hi, God, you sent me. Jesus, talk to me. My spirit is open. I silence every voice of fear. Silence them first. I silence every wicked voice. That wants to make God look unfaithful in my life. Lord, you are faithful. And you are sitting down. And the spirit of wisdom begins to move. The spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything. He can just say, call one person. And you call the person. And he says, I'm going to do a transfer. You will think it's 100,000. You will see 3 million. And God says, now it has come. Go and marry your wife. And other people will see you and say, you that I know. Abba, my brother. And you, you will quietly go back and give God glory. Ah, God, wisdom has covered for me. That's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own. Based on the physical parameters you see, but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours. Wisdom bail them out. Someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight. Because the depending on men forever... Let God send them. Remember I told you all blessings come from God through men to you. But when you begin to depend on men, depending on men is addictive. It's addictive. Those men can even be your father and your mother. Many of us who have all this right conscious mentality. My father, you are the one that gave birth to me. You are 40 years, you are still saying it. And... God may not cause what is happening in your family, but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out. And then you sit down. And then you worry and call it meditation. And God says, no. Worrying has stopped you from doing that. But you sit down and you meditate. Let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution. No. I wish it were so. Sometimes it can happen. But that's just God's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day... That it doesn't come with the speed you want. You will know God has been faithful. And you will stay. There are people who stay for weeks. Weeks turn to months. Every multi-millionaire knows this thing I'm telling you. That their result is not just based on what they do. But based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions. It is true. Way before God blessed this ministry with these crowds. I had captured it. There. Do you believe what I've taught you tonight? My, my prayer for you is not just that you finish the service today and say, wow, nice. <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say, Lord, I know I'm a prayer warrior, but there is no time in silence to sit quietly. Wake up in the night and think, Lord, what is the next key? What is the next step? There are bills before me. What is the next step? This is the dimension we must step into as a ministry. There has to be a way out. Don't say there is no way. Don't join Satan. Saying there is no way is calling God a liar. You open scripture. No. There is a way. Ah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, 
Like a candle, light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle, light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my light. have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially. You will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same. Because out of the abundance of the heart, what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind? It's not about doing things. You tell people these things, they never listen. Because most people think men of God know nothing about finances. And people run around looking for all kinds of, give me money, let me do this. And God says, one thing is needful, settle down first. Apostle, what do you think I can do to prosper? Sit down. No, I, my, blood, my blood is hot. Calm down. And one, the breath of the Spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the Lord will create a wonder out of your life. Share what I'm saying. Write the challenges. Let me give you an assignment. Go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting God for and sit with a clean sheet of paper in your Bible and worship and just keep looking at them. Let me teach you this in conclusion. Can I, can I, am I free to teach you? Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. La baka su de bilahasiya na katabushi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said the eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something. He was teaching a powerful principle that the eye these two objects you see in front of your face. That there is a mystery. Seeing is only one of the functions. And it's simply because that's all science told you. There is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes. That's why God healed every blind person he saw. There was no blind person that passed Jesus that was not healed. There were other cripples that he left them, but he was violent on blindness. There is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny. Listen, Paul became blinded by the glory of God, but God had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened. Do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep? Light me, Lord. Light my life. Light my destiny. Brothers and sisters, there are secrets in this book. When you find it, your results are not just an issue of wish. These eyes you see, let me tell you what happens. Anything the eye makes contact with consistently. The mind, the mind, listen to me carefully. What your eyes makes contact with, it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality. Now watch this. It is not the thinking about it. It is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit. Now, the Holy Ghost knows the solution. Are we together now? You meditate, not just by closing your eyes alone, because sometimes you close the physical eyes, but you are still seeing. Are we together now? 
And so that's the reason why you pray well in the night. Because there are few distractions. Your eye is seeing, but you just see black and white. This color sometimes can create noise. It is an enemy to meditation. Are we together? Go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you. Where you are not seeing the speaker, never took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you. This eye is a transmitter. The same way you have a radio wave. Watch this. Not just your ears. This eye, the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk. That you lift an antenna and it starts receiving. The, before you, the goal is to get that sound to your radio. Is that true? But you lift up something. That something is your eyes. That when you begin to make contact with the word of God. I don't mean reading it. Just looking. Open thou my eyes. That I may behold wondrous things. What did David know? So. You are making contact. And all of a sudden, let me tell you what will happen. Very soon, your eyes will stop seeing. You are looking, but you are no longer seeing. Your mind is what takes over. Have you seen that happen? That you are reading something, and for hours you keep reading the same line. You can't move forward. That's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you. In that case, worrying. the eyes, then your ears. These things are great. I'm showing you. Notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever. You never sit down particularly to hear them. But after hearing them five or six times, you know the next song. And you can sing along. If they ask you to sing it on your own now, you can't sing. But once they play it, you can follow it and sing. These are systems. The eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery. Yes. He told the man at Get Beautiful, look at us. Use your eyes. I'm about to talk to you. I thought you said, give me your ears. He said, look at us steadfastly. And he looked at them. And he said, now you are seeing. What was the requirement of Elijah receiving from Elijah? Not if you can hear me. If you can was he not looking at him? This is your Bible. I'm not reading an occult book. This is your Bible. When Jesus was, le was levitating to heaven, the Bible says they kept looking at him. Their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him. And something happened to them. Could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around? No. That's why you don't remember the faces of blind people. Because you cannot see their eyes. The, the, the part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes. Let's pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my life. The Bible says, does not wisdom try. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. The manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. 
is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. Without wisdom, revelation is not even possible. The spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions. Brothers and sisters, you will watch mountains before you crash. And people look at you and say, what wisdom is this? There is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution. It's a mystery that was unveiled. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible. Without it, you are just joking around. I saw this in my life. I craved for the spirit of wisdom. I pursued it with my life and my all. The day the spirit of wisdom came upon me, I knew. I have been studying the Bible. But brothers and sisters, when the spirit of wisdom comes, your results change immediately in a strange way. The speakings of the spirit. We need this for our families. Could this be why your ministry has been grounded? Could this be why our families never rise to a certain extent? We think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that. No, please help them. We are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say, Lord, a baptism. I'm tired of no results in my life. I'm tired of foolish decisions in my life. Pray. Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solution. Never stranded of solution. There is always something to do. There is so, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. There is peace that has friends. There is Hallelujah. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Even in the spirit of wisdom is an answer. A strange answer. Lord, there is an answer to my financial predicament. There is an answer to the challenge in my life. That you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there. There has to be an answer to the challenges in my family. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive a strategy. Say it in the name of Jesus. I receive the strategy out of confusion, out of pain, out of tragedy. Lift your voice and begin to pray. There has to be a strategy. He made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom. Yeah, 
There has to be a way. I cannot beg forever. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to my ministry rising. There is a way. There is a way. There has to be a way. I receive, I receive divine strategies, illumination. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you move mountains. You move mountains. You cause walls. Let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind i like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the Spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost to breathe upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin His work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect, agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel you didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around stop all this moving up and down and sit down Sit down with the Holy Ghost. Sit down. Let Him breathe upon your eyes. Let Him breathe upon your ears. Let Him breathe upon your mind. 
and my brother, my sister, your life will change in a way that will surprise you. It's a guarantee that I give you. The hidden wisdom that the princes did not know. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So God used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth. So there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality. The plan of salvation. Go to come, let us build a city. It is a carry block. He said, sit down, let's build a city. And they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity. They saw it happening. And the Bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that God came down. They had not started building. But the Bible says God came down to see the city which the Son of Man had built. It. They had finished it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you will never do anything great. This is it. The Spirit of God with the raw material of your mind, not business, not job, stay with you. Finish that work with Him. That's why there is nobody who cannot rise. Your little one room with roaches around, no problem. Use it as the place, like the cave of Adullam. Start from there. It's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people. He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Listen, you see, this is what makes you confident in your results. You know how they came and you know what to keep doing. That's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing. The people are not sure. When you see great men like our father, Bishop Oedipo, and, and um, Papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk, you think they are arrogant. They are not fools. That's why Bill Gates remains the wealthiest man. That's why all of these people come. They replace him for a moment today, he gets back again. And all of them keep recycling among their circle. It never goes anywhere because they know. They have lost their ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism. It's the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier and the poor getting wealthier, poorer. Because all they see keeps making sure they remain there. The only thing they make the contact with and share are things that keep reprogramming. Like you have water cycle, you have nitrogen cycle, you have poverty cycle, you have wealth cycle, where things reinforce themselves again. When I started working in the anointing, my eyes did not see so much results. So sometimes you need to push through. But because I have made contact with the results, it has created a cycle. You see that? So you are not trying to get the power of God to move. Your mind has been indoctrinated. It has become a stronghold that the power of God can move. So the Holy Spirit comes through your mind like neural paths will teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again. That's what happens. Lift your hands. Our time is gone. But I truly, truly want God to do much in your life this year. He declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. We are starting the seven days of fasting. Please don't miss it. Every night I'm going to be bringing mystery upon mystery and we're going to be praying that these things will push our life forcefully to dimensions you never dreamt possible. I stretch my hands towards you and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, may the spirit of wisdom, not just the gift of wisdom, the spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that brings strategies to you. I release that dimension in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare inside overflow one, two, three, those following online. From tonight, begin to birth creative solutions. In the name of Jesus. By this impartation, I declare 
that every mountain that stands before you on its encounter with the spirit of wisdom may it become a level playing ground in the name of Jesus please keep standing there are people here who need to hand over their lives to Christ Jesus Christ is the factor please keep standing let's honor those coming out now Jesus Christ is the reason and the only reason why the things we are teaching works he is the power behind creation he is the power behind prayer he is the power behind this knowledge are we together he said ye must be born again there are people scattered across this auditorium and around in the various overflows who are saying man of God I have been so blessed tonight but truly I have not handed my life over to Jesus or there are people who are saying man of God I need to make my ways right with God I have I remember coming out to make an altar call but as it is right now I know that I've derailed from the part of the spirit and I want to be restored wherever you are we have two minutes for you overflow three you can walk to your projector stand outside Overflow 3, you can just walk to the front of your projector stand. Overflow 1 and 2 and those inside, please make your way quickly. You are making this decision. If you are outside, please run. Our time is gone. I want to lead you to Jesus. God bless you. You are inside this auditorium. Make your way to the front. God bless you, young man. God bless you. Koinonia, appreciate them. They are coming. Make your way. Keep coming. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Overflow one and two, quickly. Please let them rush if you are coming. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Lord come and change your life. Don't sit down when you know that your way is not right with God. No one will force you. But I want you to make that decision for the sake of your destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Overflow 3, just walk to the front of your projector stand. If you're coming out quickly, 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 join them. Man of God, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Join them. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. God bless you. Hallelujah. Join them quickly. Now, I want to lead you. She's coming. Please hurry up, hurry up quickly. Hurry up quickly. Come stand. Now, thank you so much for this great decision. I want you to lift your right hand and say this after me passionately. You're not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God, that you died for me. Join them. Tonight, I hand my life over to you. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that from tonight until forever, I belong to you. Amen. Keep your hands lifted, Jesus. Help them. May your spirit that we have so much talked about and acknowledged even tonight, rest upon them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may they rise from glory to glory. Give them a new experience. Lord, I pray that you authenticate their prayers by granting them access to the spirit of truth. I pray that your grace will keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please return. Okay, follow um, the gentleman waving his hands, all of you. They'll take you outside and um, you'll be back. Now, please, just to announce to us that... Um